Cyberpunk 2077 has gotten the 1.5 patch, which is its high definition version that has all sorts of graphical improvements and also means it's widely regarded as meant to be quote unquote the finished version or the this should have actually been 1.0 in the first place version of the game. So I have been playing the game somewhat on the PlayStation 5 version. Um, I'm not, I've not beaten it yet. I'm actually, I haven't, I haven't even gotten quite gotten yet to the, you've gotten Johnny Silverhand stuck in your head yet portion of the game. Um, but I was playing through it and giving some thoughts. I'm going to put some gameplay capture of it on the up in the picture in picture for this i um will be this the gameplay capture in question it's not going to have hdr because the device i'm using average media 4k um so that bad boy does not do um hdr i am that's a future kit upgrade uh, but it will let me do the game, capture the ray tracing, so that's nice there. As far as where the game is at gameplay wise, um, it plays fine. Um, I'm doing more of a solo build this time. A lot of the uh, net runner hacking stuff that I used for my PC build has been spectacularly nerfed over time. Um, like a lot more enemies, the shutdown um, mechanic doesn't work on them anymore so that's not an option uh, particularly for using those that for the uh for the cyber psycho quest line which is what i went through before so i'm doing one more combat uh solo for focused one here i'm probably to do some net runner stuff just for triggering debuffs and that sort of thing on enemies um but in any case vehicle control is better i do like how the triggers on the Dual sense work for uh, driving and shooting. Um, in particular, I'm doing a solo um, or Street Samurai is the is the uh, Shadow One version for it, but a combat focused heavy build. Um, solo is the technical term in the cyberpunk tabletop game setting. Um, it's particularly notable noticeable with the shotguns, uh, particularly double barrel shotguns where because of the sensitivity of the triggers and how it relates to aiming, um, I do have a much better sense of, um, like, kind of yanking down the trigger and then getting like, doing a light press for a single barrel and then going down all the way to just nail my nail a target with both barrels at one whack. Uh, that very satisfying. Uh, similarly with the driving the vehicles, it gives a bit of a sense of, um, not of the speed of the vehicles or lack thereof in some cases where like your beater car that you get to start off with, uh, as a, uh, like, like the pedal, the, the triggers for accelerator don't, don't go all the way down, um, in speed. And whereas some of the more higher end sports cars, which my character has borrowed, um, they have much more kick to them. And like you can get the pedal going, the uh, triggers as pedals going closer to the floor, or in this case, back of the control, the full deployment on the controller, which it, it's, it's a really, really satisfying experience. Handling in vehicles in general is much better. Uh, it like I played the comp, the PC version when I wasn't doing like moving and aiming and that sort of thing with mouse and keyboard. A lot of vehicle stuff I deferred to um, uh, Xbox Series X controller or some cases not Series X but um, X, yeah the um, Xbox One sorry controller um and in some cases the ps4 controller and it was somewhat satisfying um like it a very different weight on the dual set it's 
a really solid realization of it. In fact, actually, I'd say it's a better utilization of the DualSense controller Cyberpunk 2077 than in Astro's Playroom. And Astro's Playroom was designed as a tech demo for the DualSense, which is impressive. I'm interested in seeing how other games use this, um, particularly eventually getting around to playing Horizon Forbidden West, for example, and seeing how it handles the archery and um, so that's makes it there. Um, from a bug standpoint, uh, the big bugs that were a problem for me and were consistently ongoing issues, um, was traffic and parking lots. Um, I have not encountered the parking lot bug yet. By explanation, the parking lot bug bug is will drive your car into a parking lot. You know, a place where you take a car into in real life and you pull a car into a parking space and you stop the car and then it's not in the middle of the road anymore. That was in 2077, a frequent encounter on the PC when I was playing it before. A frequent encounter problem I ran into was you would drive into a parking lot and it's like you all of a sudden drove into mud um like you like you took your car or you pulled your car off of gravel road and discovered oh no there's just there's just mud mud here up to my axles and i need to call a tow truck kind of situation um and that happened just in parking lots just regular ordinary parking lots all over night city um, so the point where it's, you're almost better off pulling your car, just stopping in the middle of the road and getting out that way. So I have not encountered the parking lot issue, but I have encountered the other issue with stopping with traffic routing, which is, um, when you stop your car in the middle of the road on like a, a four lane street where there's cars could theoretically, you know, move around your car. Um, it ha that problem is still there. So that traffic get routing issue is still there. I haven't been in a portion of the game with a cutout where where you have an actual shoulder you can pull off into just check to see if issue that issue still ongoing uh there but they still haven't quite figured out traffic routing to an extent to have cars just kind of drive around you which is still a disappointing thing because that's a that's something grand theft auto 3 figured out on the playstation 2 so this may be something that a subsequent patch will fix but as the game is significantly improved in a lot of respects, and it is a very pretty game, um, the footage not um, not having HDR um, means it's not quite giving justice uh, for the look and feel of environments. Um, I do recommend you check out the Digital Foundry video, uh, which I will link in the doobly doo below. By the way, shame on you, Wolf, Apple uh, YouTube for Hating the doobly doo by default, uh, uh, even more so on the PC version. Um, in any case, check out the doobly doo. I will link to the digital foundry video. I also probably stick it up in here um, as well. It gets more into how the ray tracing works and frame rates and that sort of thing. This that that that's digital foundry's butter. Um, but I do like how it looks. I like how the HDR plays out. It gives the night gives Night City a much stronger vibe to it. Um, it's not full reflection ray tracing in terms of like the water puddles and that sort of thing, but otherwise it's it is a visually solid game, and with a lot of the bigger bugs resolved, I appreciate that a lot. It's not a flawless game still by any stretch of the imagination, um, and it's a bit of a bummer that it's taken a year to get to this point, but, and I almost kind of wish that we'd gotten it pushed back that extra year. I would have been willing to wait for it, um, get it in this state uh, from the get-go, and I think people would have been more forgiving to an extent had it come out in a better, more realized state still again it's still a flawed game it still has problems it's still very much 
to make the comparison, this is not The Witcher 3. This is The Witcher 1 in the sense of CD Projekt Red trying at making a big budget first person shooter open world environment game uh, with not a new engine. They're definitely reusing stuff from The Witcher 3, but in, and also in a more modern metropolitan environment with cars as opposed to a fantasy medieval inspired environment with you know pedestrian traffic horses carts that sort of scenario i do hope that we do eventually get a cyberpunk 2078 or what have you a sequel to this because It, with the Witcher, the Witcher slash the Witcher Enhanced Edition, what have you, was a flawed game, very deeply flawed, and I encountered a lot of bugs on it well after release when I played it on PC. But the Witcher Two was it dramatically improved, and I hope, and the Witcher Three is in a lot of is held rightfully as some of as being one of the greatest. Western RPG console and computer RPGs of the time. So, like, eclipsing Mass Effect 2. Um, so I would hope that if CD Projekt Red is able to continue, able to repeat that arc, and that the issues with this Cyberpunk, with Cyberpunk 2077 doesn't preclude them from being able to make subsequent games, that they're able to take, to take what they've learned from this and refine this on. Oh, so that's that's my thoughts. If you have played the patched version, um, go ahead and post in the comments below. And if you have not picked it up yet, I'll put some affiliate links in there. Um, physical copies of the game are going for it's still going for pretty modest prices. Um, as of this recording, it's it's getting a little easier to or a little harder, I should say, to find the Xbox and PlayStation 4 versions at the moment, just because, well, uh, people are going, oh, this game doesn't su doesn't suck as bad anymore. I'll try it now. And so those copies may be a little harder to find. But, again, I, I think we're now definitely more in a state where I can feel more confident in recommending that you, that you try the game out. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.